Hey, let's say what's going on. It's Ross here. Today we'll be talking about uh, really cool things, in my opinion, that make uh, reef tanks really unique and awesome uh, endeavors. Most freshwater tanks, with some exceptions, uh, are just pretty much fish, plants, bacteria. Uh, maybe you'll have one or two inverts in there that you put in purpose. Reef tanks, by design, can't do that. You see, to stabilize a reef tank, to have corals growing and to have everything all squared away and intact, you really need to have an extremely diverse and functional community of biological critters going on in your tank. Uh, when's the last time you went out into the wild, you know, if you ever got the chance to scoop it out of a real coral reef, or if you just went out into your local pond, stream, even the coast around here on the East Coast. When's the last time you just saw a fish? You know, if you look at any little uh, patch of dirt, if you lift over any rock, there's, there's, there's dirt there and all kinds of critters will start squiggling by, large, small. If you go at night and you shine a flashlight, you'll see all kinds of pool pods and, and other zooplankton pepping around. These things are evidence that, that nature has this incalculable, powerful diversity where we have all these different critters consuming and recycling resources. Now, to take that, to mimic just a slice of it, is the best and most surefire way to create everlasting beauty in the reef aquarium. It's the way that you have no algae buildup on the glass or minimalized. It's the way that you make your water changes something that just boosts growth as opposed to keeps your fish always on the threshold of surviving or not. It's the way that you can make your tank more resilient potentially to ick and other parasites. Today we'll be talking about the cleanup crew in the reef aquarium. Then my favorite uh, setup in the shop. This is the invert section. Uh, this is not run with copper because copper is extremely toxic to uh, photosynthetic organisms and invertebrates. So all of our cleanup crew here uh, would get shocked by it. Um, so this is where we get to keep all the fun stuff um, that wouldn't survive in the fish only. So here we see that cleanup crew is a very generalized term for anything that's going to be consuming waste uh, from the, the quote-unquote model of uh, critters that we have in the tank. So if you have like, let's say, a blue tang, a big fox-faced rabbit fish, and a bunch of SPS coral, you know, our goal is to be constantly providing lots of food for the tangs uh, to keep them nice and fat, and at the same time, keeping the nitrate levels close uh, to zero to keep that SPS nice, hungry, and happy. So these guys are absolutely key for being able to achieve both those contradictory goals. Uh, first, we have, um, frankly, uh, things that are in the setup. These are my favorite, so let's see if we can find one. But things like Nasaria snails that burrow into the sediment themselves. These guys are like little subterranean tanks. So they'll go through the sediment um, and they're carnivorous, so they'll uh, directly eat uh, uneaten feed particles. And that's the biggest major set of cleanup crew critters. These guys, the Diogeneidae, the, the hermit crabs, all these uh, critters that are just going to be directly going into the nooks and cranny of your tanks and they're going to be uh, eating all the uneaten feeds. That uneaten feed isn't getting a chance to oxidize and make more toxic compounds. Now, let's go back to our nitrogen cycle. You know, our end goal is to realize that all of our tanks, all of our corals are going to be giving off ammonia and we're going to be wanting to convert that into nitrate through nitrite, but eventually nitrate is going to build up and cause our tanks to have all kinds of waste algae and all kinds of gross stuff. So by having little guys like these going through the sediment, things like spaghetti worms, uh, things like even bristle worms that are going through the walk work, uh, micro bristle stars, we have all these different critters which are directly eating food and algae and all these things that um, basically are reducing the amount of rotting feed. So that's step one. Step two is, you know, once the feed is processed into ammonia and nitrate, it's gonna be consumed by photosynthetic organisms. Now, it's gonna happen whether you like it or not. Now that photosynthetic organism could be ugly as diatoms, or, or it could be really ugly hair algae, or it could be all kinds of other critters. Um, that are really unattractive. And that will strip away all of the different nitrates out of your system. Um, but then you also want things like these snails. So we have trochus snails, turbo snails, all these different snails which essentially have a radula. And these things, is, it's like a tongue with, with serrated razor blades. And as they're constantly moving about the aquarium, they're scraping at the biofilm, uh, all the surfaces of the rocks, the glass, and their way of actually taking 
all of those critters which are absorbing the waste directly, all that algae, all that bacteria, and scraping it off so you're not necessarily looking at it. So it's kind of, uh, the algae's cleaning the tank of its toxins, and then the snails are scraping up the algae, and just like your lawn, the more that the algae is grazed by the snails, the more it does its thing to create what we call an oligotropic or nutrient stock environment for your corals. Now, we also have options to reduce all of that uh, quote unquote ugly algae. We have things like catomorpha and halomenia red algae, uh, macroalgae, seaweeds that can go into the refugium. These directly consume the dissolved organic uh, wastes of that uh, the reef tank and can even starve out uh, some of those annoying pest species. Um, we have things like sabellid worms. These guys are filter feeders. Uh, corals themselves, things like xenia, all your leather corals, these are fantastic consumers, not only of nitrates directly by absorbing them into their zoosome belly and their other symbionts, but they'll also directly consume and eat the bacteria and algae which are cleaning up your, your crew at the same time. Let's talk about something a little more charismatic. Now, feasting on my hand this whole time has been a collection of shrimp. Now, these are cleaner shrimp and peppermint shrimp. Uh, these guys are cleanup crew in their own right. So these guys are constantly grazing the environment and, and you can see that they're using their antenna and they're picking up on all these chemical smells and they're being like, oh yeah, oh, Tarasa's touched a lot of good organics today. And uh, they're just grazing all off me. And that's fantastic for them to do in your aquarium because when they're grazing off the rock work, again, they're just using like microscopic little hands to reach into all those nooks and crannies and, and just act as, as infinitely more competent cleanup crew. And then, especially with these cleanup shrimp, these cleaner shrimp, these guys are hopping onto your fish, your eels, all your other surfaces, and they can actually be consuming parasites at the same time. But long story short, the reef tank uh, and the wild reef, both of them are a thing of beauty because they are places where dozens, hundreds, thousands of different critters, diverse critters. Critters that are constantly competing, yet at the same time have all found some sort of functional harmony together. By having as many different and diverse different critters as you can, operating at as many different trophic levels as you can, that's how you can really keep your tank looking fantastic and your fish and your corals happy, healthy uh, for the long term. So take it from nature.